together if you have your bibles one to go five oh, you, you are not hey let's read together now one to go finally my brethren be strong in the lord and in the power do is because um the text we were given began with the word finally we need to find out because when you hear finally most times in the conversation it means that there are many things that have been said before that time is that true so if we say finally and i begin to teach from here uh, not many of us may understand what has been said so theologians have actually said that the book of ephesians is probably the most uh, powerful epistle that paul wrote to the church next to it will be the book of romans and what we see in the book of ephesians is that we see how we are redeemed and how the redeemed should live somebody say redeemed i need to be sure we are together say redeemed we are redeemed and how the redeemed should live in the book of ephesians we see uh, what the man of god watch my knee will call the trapatite dimension of the believer's existence one of it is seat the sitting posture of the believer that on the day that you receive jesus as your personal lord and savior what happened was that you were made to sit together are we together so the sitting position of the believer is that you are not trying to sit you have actually been made to sit and our mothers have even by experience, you would notice that when a child is born, the posture that he must take before he begins to walk is what? Are we together? Is what now? Meaning that it is impossible and, okay, well, it is inaccurate to begin to walk until you have sat down. So, the first posture of the Christian, the new creation in Christ Jesus, is what? The posture of sitting. So, Paul said, you are seated together with him in heavenly places. The next thing that you will see is that um, although you are seated, you also need to walk. Somebody say walk. That's why it says you are God's workmanship. Recreated in Christ Jesus unto every good work that you should walk in them. So there is the sitting position that has to do with the placement of the believer in the place of authority. The walking dimension where you do not just mouth that you are a new creation, but you actually live the life of one who has been generated are we together now then the next posture of the believer will be to stand and basically that's what you see in Ephesians chapter 6 because he mentions the word stand about two times he says having done all to stand tell your neighbor stand he didn't say to us say stand and so most times when we want to engage in spiritual warfare what we are trying to do is to gain victory over the kingdom of darkness. But no, the battle between light and darkness was already won before you and I were incorporated into the battle. Do you agree? So when the Bible tells us to actually stand, it's not saying try to win. It's saying... Are we still getting... So he says, finally... So let us run from Ephesians chapter 1 to Ephesians chapter 6 where he mentioned the word finally. Let's see the things that we can glean from it and then we'll run into um, the chapter that we will consider tonight. If you are with me, say hallelujah. All right, so number one, Ephesians chapter 1. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 1. There are many verses there, but we'll consider two. Ephesians chapter 1, if you look at verse number 7. Ephesians 1 verse 7. Uh, if our projector man can help me. Okay, thank you. Can we read it together, please? We'll just read it together. One to go. In whom we have redemption through his blood. And so, some men are not reading over there. Let's read together. One to go. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. So, what you see here, a basic understanding, is that in whom, that whom talks about Jesus Christ. So he says in Christ, what we have is redemption. What is redemption? Redemption is deliverance with a price. Redemption is that although we were dead in sins and trespasses, somebody came to pay the price 
on our behalf so that we can now become the righteousness of God. So that we can be reconciled unto God. So that we can have fellowship with God. So that we can have relationship with God. So he says, in whom we have redemption through the instrumentality of his blood, the forgiveness. So, number one, what do we have in Christ? Number one is what? Are we Bible students here? Oh yeah, now number one is what? Redemption. Number two? Huh? The forgiveness of sins. Number three now? According to the riches of his grace. So, redemption and the forgiveness of sins is a possibility based on what? The so the currency for your redemption and forgiveness is what? Hey, the word now? Riches of his grace. No. You see, your response is important because we are not, uh, we are not motivational speakers. We need you to respond so that I am sure that um, we are all following. Do you get the idea now? Do you get the idea? Okay, so let's look at verse 17. Let's look at verse 17. We'll just run through a few scriptures so that we'll get the picture of the entire garment of the book of Ephesians. Look at verse 17 of Ephesians. Now, Paul, here is praying for the church, the brethren at Ephesus. And then he says, can we read the prayer together now? One to go. That the God of our... No, I would prefer if everybody participated. It makes it interesting. Let's go now. One to go. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, uh -huh, may give wit. Number one, he calls him the God of our Lord Jesus. Number two, he calls him the Father of glory. Number three, may give unto you the, uh huh, great, the spirit of, uh huh, and revelation in. So, what we actually see is that the, the, Paul, uh, the prayer of Paul here is very instructive. He says that the person who gives the spirit of wisdom and revelation is, is who now? Great. But it does not stop there. He now says, that if Paul actually said, may God give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Do you know that is a risky prayer? Why? Because there are many spirits of wisdom and revelation. There is the wisdom of this world. 1 Corinthians 2. There is the wisdom of the princes of this world that comes to naught. There is the wisdom of the rulers. There is the wisdom of the serpent. Then there is the wisdom of God. So he says here, the spirit of wisdom and... Eh? And what now? Revelation in... The knowledge of a person, meaning that, you see, one of the unfortunate things in church today is that we want the spirit of wisdom and revelation, but it is not in the knowledge of a person. Meaning that your daily attendance of church and Bible study or conferences should actually bring you into a better revelation of who now? Of Jesus. Meaning that, listen, li listen now, the fivefold ministry is not successful. If those who are listening to the fivefold ministers are not coming into what now? The revelation of the knowledge of. Meaning that if Christ is not increasing in our midst, but we are increasing in number, we are still failing. Meaning that we can teach all kinds of remas. If it is not bringing us into the revelation of Jesus Christ, as revealed by the apostles in scripture, then we are failing in our duty. Even if power is manifesting. Tell your neighbor power. The first manifestation of the power of God really is by the word. When I came here, I saw that you opened the scripture. Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created. Is that true now? The heavens and the earth. How did he do it? By, by the word. How did he make all things? By John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was, and the word was, and the word was, the same was in the beginning with, just be saying God. By him were all things, and without him was not anything made that was, in him was, but wait, by him were all things, meaning that the Satan you are spending hundred years to combat, who made him? But did God make him as Satan? He made him as Lucifer, is that correct? Isaiah 14, Ezekiel 28. Now, the Bible actually makes us to understand that Jesus, um, Satan himself was actually called Lucifer. And that actually meant that he was a bright star. He was actually an angel that also bears the light of the presence of God. Because revelation is never far from a true worshiper. Are you, are you together? Are we together? 
So we see in Ephesians 1, we see three things actually. We see the preeminence of Christ. We see the participation of Christ. We see the application of the Spirit. That the Father intends it. The Son participates in it by His coming. The Spirit applies it to us by faith. Then we go to Ephesians 2. Tell your neighbor Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2, we see many things, but let's look at verse 6 to 8. Ephesians 2, 6 to 8, just very quickly. Can we read together now? One, two, ready, go. And has raised us up together and made us. Uh huh. In verse 7 now. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of inness toward us through Jesus Christ. Verse 8 now. For, read this out louder now. I want to go now. For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that, not of yourselves, it is. So, question one. Salvation is by true faith. Say it two times. One. So that means that anything outside salvation by grace through faith is actually self-righteousness. And Isaiah already told us that the best of man is actually like a used menstrual pad. That's the word filthy rag. It means that the best that a man apart from Christ can offer to God in trying to please him is not acceptable at all to God. Why? For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified except by faith. So he says that our salvation is by the grace of God through faith. How does faith come? Romans 10, 7. By what, sir? Yes. Meaning that if you speak in tongues from now till tomorrow, if you do not learn to sit down to be taught scripture, listen, there are many sermons today that if you off the keyboard, God, there will be no content, no substance. You know why? Because one of the things that the enemy does when he knows that there is something that is original, he counterfeits it. And so you can be in your campus fellowship and you want to, rather than teach the word of God, you need strings quickly because you want to enter into the realm of the spirit. Listen, strings has its place, but without sound doctrine, you will enter into a realm where you will even be destroyed. The realm of the spirit is such that if you are not taught by truth, if you are not trained by truth, if you are not submitted to sound Bible teaching, you will assess things in the spirit. Your life will be an opposite of the thing that God intended to make you. Are we still together? If you like me, say hallelujah. Okay, at least, at least some people here. Now, if you look here again, no, no, give us Ephesians 2. That was just Ephesians 2. So we, we see that uh, our salvation is by grace through faith. And the Bible says it is the gift of God. So, your salvation is the gift of God. One of the things that sponsors very deep worship in the life of a man, that is, I've noticed, that the more of a true worshiper I want to become, the more of a Bible student I must become. You can go for worship conferences because you like the minister singing, and yet you don't encounter Jesus after the meeting, even though you cried. Tears is not the proof that Jesus is present, because there are many people that encounter Jesus in the scripture and they didn't cry. Are you together? Ephesians 3. Ephesians 3. Let's see. Uh, verse 10. Verse 10. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10. So, we have seen Ephesians 1. We have seen Ephesians 2. Ephesians chapter 3. I'm laying a foundation so that when the man of God comes, um, he will be a bigger blessing to us. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 10. Can we read together now? One to go. To the, remember what brought us here is what now the word finally thank you that's where we are coming from we've not entered our text but if you look here at verse 10 can we read together please again one to go to the intent somebody already offended let's try again one to go now to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the there's no time. Do you know what is called the manifold wisdom of God? Jesus Christ is actually the manifold wisdom of God. Because Christ has become unto us the wisdom and the... And what now? 
A.K. The wisdom of God and the power of God. He has not only become to us wisdom, power, redemption, sanctification. Listen, anything in God is found in Christ. Anything in God is found. Anything of God is found. Anything with God is found. Anything through God is found. So it says that the intention of the finished work of Christ on the cross is that through the church, the manifold wisdom of God. Now, when you talk about the manifold wisdom of God, apart from the fact that the manifold wisdom of God is Christ, is that the manifold wisdom of God is the glory of God. Tell anyone about the glory of God. Ah. The glory of God is actually, how many of you have been to the chemist here before? The chemist. Don't lie. I know you're a man of faith. Have you been to the chemist since you have been born? Ah, someone has not been to the chemist. Okay, clinic. <laughs> Say no, that one was not a real chemist. Have you been to the hospital before? Were you born in the hospital? Well, at least around. Okay. But have you seen capsule before? Capsule. Do you know that red and yellow capsule? When you used to play football and you shoot, what do you put now? Red and yellow capsule. Okay, some of you caught leaves like have leaves. <laughs> now, the word glory is actually like that capsule. Glory encapsulates the nature, the attributes, the character, the will, and the intent of God. Meaning that anything that is of God must be glorious. Meaning if... Can I move around a little, sir? We'll check note later, but let's just talk about this thing. Meaning that... Let's talk about the attributes of God. Since we are talking about the glory of God. Now, if God is righteous, righteousness becomes the glory of God. Are we together? Okay, if God is just in that he just came when he killed Abel... That justice of God is called what? The glory of God. Are we together? Okay, let's use the general one. If God is love, in that while you were yet a sinner, Christ died for you. What is that now? The love of God is part of what? The glory of God. Meaning that also, if we have what is called the wrath of God against sinners, because God is just and he must reward every man. When a man dies, forget about that scope that God is going to do like this. When you stand before God, you find out that the smallest of the angels may be even be bigger than you. I know some of you say you are seeing angels that are like a puppy of a dog. <laughs> That's not Bible angel. <laughs> the wrath of God that is sure to come upon the sons of disobedience is part of the glory of God. Meaning that, listen, hell is hell because God is there, but the goodness of God is not finding expression in hell. Because if God is not in hell, that means that he's not omnipresent. Are you together? Are you together? God is everywhere, but he does not choose to manifest dimensions of his glory everywhere. So the wrath of God is part of the glory of God. Today's thought, like the message on the love of God, we have ignored other aspects of the glory of God. Therefore, the version of God that was sold to us is an incomplete version of God. If you are still with me, say amen. So the church, the body of Christ, you and me, becomes the theater through which the glory of God finds the expression. Meaning that, for example, in Acts 2 and 3, when the disciples were moving around, and the Bible says, there was a man at the gate beautiful, and the apostle said, silver and gold have I not to give you, but such as I, such as I, give I thee, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Uh -huh. And the guy does what? He rises up to walk. That is an aspect of what? Guess what? When something stands and carries the gate, and takes it high on a mountain. What is that called? That power of God is an aspect of what? Are you following me over here? The glory of God, is that true? Now, when Joseph looks at a damsel, Potiphar's wife, and she's trying to seduce him, even though Joseph did not say take power, the power of God on his inside, that was his ability to restrain from the appetites of the flesh, is called what? Meaning that glory is not necessarily feeling. Glory begins with understanding. Are we still together? Ephesians. We are in Ephesians 3. Is that true? Do you love Bible study? Do you love Bible study? Okay, let's see verse 20. Let's see verse 20. Because Paul said, finally, we must be sure what he's talking about. 320. Can we try again now? Let's read. One to go. Now. Unto, uh, you're not, eh, let's read now. One to go. Now. Unto him. That is, that is what? Can you say Able. 
it's a beautiful thing to know that the God you serve is not weak. Because in the day of battle, two things must happen. One person must be a victor, the other person must be a victim. There's nothing like draw in spiritual warfare. Are you following? Tell your neighbor, there is no draw. If I went in primary school, we said, no draw, draw, draw. <laughs> There's nothing like draw, draw, please. There is no draw in... You are either a victor or a... Now unto him. So let's read again now. That is to... I need you to read it with faith. Eh, let's try again. Want to go now? Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly. Meaning that even if the limitations of the understanding of a man that is the best in Bible study is here. The Bible says God passes it. Meaning he meets the expectations of man and surpasses it. Why? He is God. He is not man. He says, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly are how many things now? Ooh, that we or according to that in heaven in heaven meaning, uh, can I ask a sincere question? Is the power of God coming down or the power of God is inside you? So when Christ came to live on your inside, what came to live on your inside? Can I have five people? Let's do a little illustration. Can I have five people? Hey, sorry, media man. Okay, let me have five people. Oh, yeah, now. Okay, five people. Like five human beings. Five now. Okay. Now, let's say I'm Jesus. Praise the Lord. At least I'm wearing a suit. But I don't think Jesus wore a suit. And I don't have slander. But let's say I'm Jesus now. Now, let's give these people names. Power, uh huh, love, huh, might. And let's leave might with power, even though it's a bit, uh huh. Power, love, wisdom. Say what you like, oh, authority. Don't say house. <laughs> say something spiritual. <laughs> counsel. Okay, Isaiah six tells us counsel and might. Now. I am Jesus. So I'm walking around. Somebody say, Jesus, Jesus. is moving around. Uh, you should be, hey, Jesus cannot move alone. Be following me now. Uh, if my Jesus moves alone, I'll get, are, you, are you together now? So as Jesus moves, what happens is that many times we are asking, where's counsel now? Uh, at least you have, you'll be able to. So, sir, now I am Jesus. Am I Jesus? Uh, he said, I'm not Jesus. Let me look for. Let's do for somebody that believes in my ministry. You know, if you don't believe in my ministry, the power cannot. Uh, am I Jesus? You know, I, I said I am Jesus. All right. In this illustration, sir, am I Jesus? All right. Now, counsel. Uh, counsel, you are too close. Okay, well, counsel is always close, but where's power? Ah, daddy. Now, when Jesus comes into the life of the average believer, this is what we want Jesus to do. Jesus, give me. Say the truth now. Agbara. Agbara. I wish the power was in the feeling. Even a madman knows that when a trailer is coming, he looks left, right, meaning that the power of the devil inside him, we need to wait because there is one that is superior. If that man dies, that devil will need another tenantship. Are <laughs> you together now? But when the power of God and the presence of Jesus is on your inside, what happens is that because Jesus cannot go to a place and the attributes of God does not follow him, you to anywhere you go, the attributes of God should what, sir? Hmm, you are getting it. So when we ask Jesus for power, you know what we are asking for? Although what you need is power, everything that God wants to give you is encapsulated inside. Power. Meaning that power is pregnant with many things. Are you together? Yes, sir. Power is what now? Daddy, I know you are a man, but power is pregnant. Meaning, you are asking God for power, but God is saying, what you need is power, but it's not power as you are thinking it is. What you need is counsel. Because if you know what to do about your finance, you will not go every December 31st looking for miracle money. A miracle... Now, can, can, we, can we say something? Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something here? Do you know that a miracle is not really... To be the, eh, I'm being careful because there will be no time to explain. But you see, a miracle often happens in scripture when the principles of the kingdom are ignored. It was because of the rebellion of Pharaoh that God had to cause water to become blood. Is that true? Are you together? 
on a normal day, wonder should happen. What is wonder? That's what makes you to wonder, to be surprised. But, you see, a sign is the explanation of that wonder. That although you are rejoicing that the power of God is made manifest, what God wants to give you is more than that. What God wants to give you is the possibilities within that power. Because you can fall down because they declare to you that there is a prophetic anointing in the house. But in the end, we found out that you did not prophesy. Are you together? But so when you are asking God for something, what happens is that God is able to give it. But what he wants to give you is superior to that thing. Inside that thing is what you really need. So you are not really asking God for power. You are checking the scriptures to ask God for what you really need. When you do not ask amiss, you cannot receive amiss. Are you blessed? Clap for power and wisdom and counsel as they find the place to sit. So we have seen Ephesians 1. We have seen Ephesians 2. We have seen Ephesians 3. Let's try Ephesians 4. Are you getting blessed? Bible study. Ephesians 4. Let's see something. Can we try verse? Uh, e, let's do nine. Ah, let's do nine. Ephesians five nine. Remember the scriptures that has brought us here is what? Finally. Can we try nine downwards? One to go now. Uh, sorry, no. Ephesians four nine. No. Ephesians four. We are not yet in five. There's something else we want to see in five. Ephesians four. Can we go now? One to go. Now, that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? Next verse. Ah, thank you, Jesus. I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit here. He that is also the... That, what now? Ascended up far above all heavens. We can do a whole series on that. Why is it that Jesus descended... Our sin brought him down. Why is it that he ascended? His, his righteousness took him up. Romans 1, 4. And was declared to be the son of God with power. According to the spirit of holiness. By his resurrection from the dead. The grave could not hold him because he was righteous. Abel's blood was the blood of an innocent man. The righteousness of Abel was limited. Why? Because all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Abel was born in the image and the likeness of Adam. And because Adam had already fallen before Abel was born, therefore, by the law of corporate responsibility, Abel already inherited the sin of the father. Even if Abel never sinned, Abel was still a sinner. Are you together? <laughs> Do you like Bible study? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might, hey, that he might what, sir? You know what that means? See, God can fill your life with something. Say amen. amen. That it might feel all things. Feel all things. Next verse. Uh, le le let's stay here a little. And I'm trying to check what I can share with you, but uh, let's see. Let's read again. Let let's confirm. Want to go now? And he gave some. Why? Let's read together. And he gave some apostles and some and some ever and some and. Some, and now, so, Jesus has fulfilled his earthly ministry and he wants to gift the church, all right, his ecclesia on the face of the earth because he is the head of the body. The church is the body. Is that correct? So, what does he give? What did he give some now? So, let's stay with apostles for, for some minutes. Are there still apostles today? Don't be quick to say yes. <laughs> Are there apostles today? Unfortunately, this is a very big argument among cessationists and among continuationists. There are some that have said, no, there are no more apostles today. And they will show you from scripture that there are no apostles today. But there are those who say, no, there are apostles today. After all, my uncle is an apostle. But it's not like that. You don't use the, your experiences to interpret the word of God. The word of God should be the lens through which your experiences are interpreted. Are we together? Are we together? In case maybe there is a young person that will say, I'm an apostle. Uh, you see, it's not the title we are talking about. Are there apostles today? And somebody will quote to you Ephesians 2.20. Can we see Ephesians 2.20? Just back up a little. Let's see. Are there apostles today? Can we read together now? One, two, read. And he built upon... Sorry. And are built upon what now? The foundation of apostles and Jesus Christ himself being what now? So, I want to ask you a question, a sincere question. Have you ever seen a house before since you have been born? Yes or no? 
No, I need a unanimous answer. Yes or no? Do you know that before you build a house, there is something you do? What do you do? After you dig a foundation, do you redig a foundation? Follow my thoughts. You see, you know one of the reasons why many of us do not learn doctrine? We come already with our preconceived notions. Meaning anything that seems to contradict you, we say no. But calm down. Check the other view of the matter so that you can have a robust understanding and know where you really stand. Are we together? So, he, according to this scripture actually, what he says is that the church of God, the ecclesia is founded upon the ministry of the apostles and the prophets. And if you study a lot of the epistles, even Jude, Jude will tell you that you earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered. Meaning that once it has been delivered, it does not need to be re-delivered. Meaning that the Bible cannot be altered because of the doctrine of the canonicity of scripture. What does that mean? God has spoken. So, when the apostles came and they were 12, were they 12? Were they 12? Okay, you are not ready. Let, let's look for something. Are you together? When Judas defected, what happened? He was replaced. Is that true? Was it Paul that replaced, replaced him on Matthias? Huh? Do you know that according to the book of Revelation 21, I think 14, the Bible actually tells us that um, apostles will actually have 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribe of Israel in Revelation, and that they have 12 crowns. He mentioned 12. He didn't say 40. Meaning that if in your campus fellowship, you already have 800 apostles, there is a problem. Are you together? I'm showing you a site. Are, are you together? Oh, okay, okay, okay. You know, this is equipping the saints. Equipping the saints means that a teaching ministry must come to bring an understanding, and then there is a release of the power of God to back up what he said. Is that true? So you will notice that, um, so the argument continues that there are no apostles today because, number one, the canon has been closed, meaning after the books of the Bible has been selected, even the Apoc Apocrypha and the other books that were introduced, they were cast aside. And the scripture for us is Genesis uh, to Revelation. According to 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. And then, he, you know, it goes on and on. But what you need to also understand is that although there are 12 apostles according to scripture, we also need to understand that actually the apostles that God raised after the 12 apostles did not consider themselves to be in the, the same ranking with the 12 apostles. Do you understand? It was not about the greatness of their gift. It was about divine election. Did, did Math, was it recorded that Matthias did a miracle? Ah, are we together? <laughs> did you know that not all the apostles actually wrote an epistle? Hello? Who wrote the book of Mark? Someone says Mark. Who wrote the book of Mark? <laughs> okay. So, when, when somebody comes and then he says, you know what, I'm an apostle. If the understanding of an apostle is that I am in the ranking with Paul, even Paul said, and the least of all the apostles. Why did he say that? He was born out of time, like he explained. And then he says that these 12 are the ones that God actually ordained for the foundation laying. Meaning that every other faithful apostle that Jesus actually ordained, they were, their apostolic is also relevant, but not for foundation laying. Are you, are you together? Okay. Prophets. I would have shared some things, but uh, prophets, uh, some apostles, some prophets. So, we know that, again, foundation. Who were the prophets? If you read the Old Testament, you see a lot of the um, dimensions of the operation of God. Number one, we see the law. Number two, we see the covenant, the priesthood. And then we had the prophets. Do you remember? We had the major prophets and the major and minor is not a title. Major and minor prophets was just a segregation by Bible scholars to say that the volume of the books that somebody like Joel wrote is what will make him a minor prophet. But the volume of books like, of men like uh, huh? Isaiah. Isaiah. That, so it is not the depth of their revelation that made them major or minor. It was the volume of their works. And so today when somebody says I'm a prophet, you need to understand 
that no matter the revelation a so-called prophet today receives, it cannot be of equal capacity with the revelation that God gave those who authored the scripture. The Holy Ghost is the author of scripture. Men are writer of scripture. That's why 1 Peter 1, 19 downwards tells us, he says no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. For holy men of God did what, sir? As they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So, listen. Because the Holy Ghost has not gone on strike, men are still receiving revelations, but their revelation from the Holy Spirit cannot be compared to the revelation that is already written. Meaning that what is written is superior to what is happening. So, when you receive something from God, if you sense a prophetic call on your life, what you should do is to find out from Scripture if what you have received is of God or another spirit. Are we together? And then we have, and some evangelists. Who are evangelists? Evangelists are not people who you see in stadiums. No. Evangelists are people who preach the glad tidings of the goodness, the good news of Jesus Christ and his saving work, number one. Number two, evangelists are those who demonstrate in practical manifestation the power of God and the power of his kingdom over the kingdom of darkness. If you are with me, say, I hear you. Number three, the assignment of the evangelist does not end on the crusade ground. Listen, any evangelist whose work ends on the crusade ground did not succeed. Why? Because the assignment of the evangelist is for the equipping of the saints. You don't equip saints on crusade, crusade ground. Are you here? Meaning that an evangelist or a prophet, I've heard people say things like, I'm a prophet, I'm not a teacher, I'm a prophet. But your prophetic ministry will be limited and will be subject to corruption if your prophetic dimension does not submit to the most sure word of prophecy. And so, evangelists are people who equip the saints to win souls. Meaning, an evangelist by the anointing of the spirit upon that office should be able to train saints to do evangelism. If you have a church who the evangelist is the only one that is doing well and the church members are not winning any soul, that evangelist is fulfilling two over ten of his calling. Are you together? Are you together? Can we continue a little more? Are you getting blessed? Sh should I change mine? Remember what brought us here is what? Finally, we'll still expose that, expose it that later. And some evangelists, and some, and some, pastors. somebody say pastors. <laughs> One of the hindrances to revival in our day and time is that everybody now who attends a church is a pastor. When an elder tells you, you are not a pastor, you are a brother, you know what we say? You are jealous of the gift of God upon my life. You, you, don't, you don't see the anointing. But there is a sister, Deborah at the back, that senses the anointing of a pastor upon you. Be careful of cooler ministry. Receive wisdom. However, some of us also heard it. Now, some pastors, do you know that a pastor is not just somebody that receives salary for staying in an office and preaching on Sunday? There are too many people receiving salary but are not conscious that there is a call of God upon their lives. A pastor is a shepherd at heart. Meaning that one of the workings of God in the heart of a pastor is compassion for the church. Not hustling for microphone. I wish I can talk to you here. Are you together now? Equipping the saints. This is one of the core areas all right, of my calling. Maybe that's why he's, he's painting me like this. I've written about 22 books and I have about 7 uh, volumes of Equip. Equip volume 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And there are diverse things we teach there. But I don't want to bring you to an understanding. You see that what pastors and teachers, theologians have debated it over and over from the first century church till today it's been debated. And what's the argument? There are pastors and then there are teachers. But listen, if you will be an effective pastor, you must be a teacher. Because the assignment of a shepherd is to lead the sheep to where they can what? Ah, tell anybody, eat. Yes. A pastor that does not feed his flock, but will just come, talk all kinds of things, say stories. Stories is not what we are looking for. We are looking for doctrine. Tell anybody about doctrine. So a pastor's assignment is to feed the flock of God with the word of God. And as the assignment of a pastor is to show the people from scripture what God wants for them. And then to continue other dimensions of the pastoral ministry. Then we have and teachers. From the word didascalia or didascalus. And a teacher is somebody who teaches. But a teacher is not just somebody who teaches. Because you can have a doctorate in divinity. And you don't have the gift of teaching. 
A teacher is one that when he communicates the word of God to you, no matter how complex that doctrine is, there is a supernatural ability to make difficult things simple to you. Praise the Lord. If you have let's say hallelujah. hallelujah. Teachers, what we need on campus now is not young men who want to go and use their campus fellowship to start their own ministry. If you are not faithful in the things of another, who will give you your own? What we need now is not, you see, I, I've witnessed it before, that somebody is not yet born again, who will later lead that person to Christ, and in his campus fellowship, he just visited, and they already question, what's your name? What's your name, sir? Oh, Ladayo. You're not saved. You just came into the church, you know, just to flex, even though you came from a Christian home, and they changed your name from Oladayo to P. Oladayo. You even make a customize and say, P. -L P. D. P. Dayo. <laughs> P. Dayo. I wish that demons respected the P. Many of us have not even encountered real demons. There's a lot of gymnastics. Nigerian demons do more drama than uh, American demons. American demons do more of ideological warfare. Nigerian demons will dramatize. And when you cast them out, the Nigerian demons will still tell you, I've gone out. When I was on campus, a demon was telling me, I've gone out. And the people said, thank you, Jesus. I said, hey, you don't understand. I've gone out means that I am here but I need you to let me rest. Are you following me? Somebody said, thank you, Jesus. And we are satisfied. Many of us are looking for the power of God to make the people fall down so that we have snapshots of everybody. The power of God littered the old place. The cameraman did not fall down. Everybody fell down. And you did not fall down. When the glory of God was made manifest in the dedication of Solomon's temple, even the priest could not stand to minister. But today you cross it and say, oh, yeah, have you, have you snapped it now? Let them... <laughs> Oh, it's ready for ministry. Oh, share it. <laughs> the day Satan will say, okay, let's even check this guy out. You find out that you are as light as a feather. So if the enemy is trying to whine you with title, tell the devil, I don't want title now. Because that's how many will receive title in scripture and they did not live up to the expectation of their title. Don't be an executive in your fellowship or a department leader in church. You carry the title. And then the only thing you can tell people is, you are not submitting to me. If there is authority, authority can be felt. If you are walking in your ordination, we can see it. There is legitimacy. People willingly submit to your leadership. You don't need to force it on them. When you force it on them, it may be a sign that it's not really there, but you are having a form of authority, but lacking the power to enforce anything. Are you blessed? Are you blessed? So that when you graduate from campus, because we're a president, as you are graduating, you still say, I'm a pastor. Once a pastor, always a pastor. Ha! <laughs> and teachers. So let's leave that. So let's say that that is Ephesians 4. If you are learning something, say hallelujah. <laughs> because if you do spiritual warfare without understanding, you'll be a casualty. So we are trying to show you all right, certain things that are very important for our spiritual growth. If God is helping you, say amen. amen. Verse 12 says, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry. Meaning that when we come to church, and, and I know many of you caring members do this to the pastor. You say, pastor, how is ministry? The pastor will say, ah, ministry. Ah, God is working, no. Ah, God is, eh. Hey. Listen. The day you are delivered from the mentality that standing behind the pulpit is ministry, that day you will begin to discover your own ordination in God. That whether in banking hall, I've worked in the bank before, and Monday turned to be our in my department, Monday had to turn to be our deliverance service. You know, deliverance service. You do it in the hall where nobody is. I will not mention the name of the bank. But Monday was deliverance service. So as everybody is suited and well-dressed, when the power of God hits you and your problem is solved, by the time we are done, you come out well-suited. And our department in the, banking, um, in the banking region of our territory became the best. Why? Because something was introduced that was not there by a Christian preacher who kept preaching one side and manifested kingdom. If you cannot do kingdom without preaching, Limited. Amen. 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 For the work of ministry. Meaning your pastor should ask you on Sunday. 
or on campus fellowship. How was ministry today in lecture? He said, ministry in lecture. No, no, no. The fellowship does not be late. That's ministry. If you forget your neighbor to minister to the, the souls that are lost in your campus, and you come to church to hear testimony of how a lot entered, you are not a prophet to heaven. Why? Because ministry follows you everywhere. The Holy Ghost is not suspended inside church. You don't drop the Holy Ghost inside church to come and pick him up when you come back. So some feel anointed on the pulpit, but don't feel anointed outside the pulpit. It was not anointed. Is God helping us? Let's go to Ephesians 5 because of time. Ephesians 5. Can somebody say thank you, Jesus? Ephesians 5. Remember, what brought us here is what? Finally. Ephesians 5. We'll soon get to finally. Can we try verse 15 to 21? Can you help me with the keyboard? Let's, let's try something. Ephesians 5, 15 to 21. We'll read it together now. One to go. See then that ye circumspectly. Oh, you are not reading again. Not as. But as. Uh-huh. I, I like the fact that he keeps mentioning have, have you noticed the book of Ephesians keeps saying redeem are you together now <laughs> are you together redeeming the time because what huh. you are spending hours learning how to dance the latest dance on tiktok you spent 8 hours doing the riaza and they say study bible for 30 minutes it looks as if a course was placed upon you you are not a spiritual person Redeeming the time, meaning there is a possibility that exists in the church for believers to be wasting time because they are not circumspect. What does it mean to be circumspect? To be circumspect is to be able to discover the future consequences of your present actions and then align yourself properly. That's why Joseph said to do this and sin. Did he say to do this and get you pregnant? Why? There was something eternal. That affected his life. He was living with eternity in view. Next verse. Because of time. Next verse. You are glorious. So glorious. In your ways. Let's go now. Verse 17. Uh -huh. Wherefore. Do not be unwise. But understand what the will of the Lord is. Uh, the will of God. <laughs> The will of God is not a uh, life partner. One say, have you found your will of God? Say, eh, I've not found him. Every day of your life, you must know the will of God. And the will of God is embedded in the word of God. God has not left himself without a witness. If you stay true to scripture and you find out what God says there, listen, some of you are praying concerning certain things. And what you need concerning it is not even prayer. It's to sit down with the word of God. A boy is already fornicating with you. Tw 12 times per month. Then he say, Daddy, I I'm still praying about him. We don't know. God, uh, uh, the, the, the Abba has not spoken. Ah, uh, No, Abba has spoken. It's you <laughs> that have not heard him. Are you following me now? Are you following me? Verse 18. Aye. Aye. Can we read now? I want to go. And be not drunk with water, with wine, wherein is dissipation, but be, be water, be being filled with the Spirit. Question On the day you got born again, were you not filled with the Spirit? You were filled with the Spirit. But listen, the Holy Spirit does not come in, in measures. Half. Holy Spirit is a person. When He comes, He comes. But what this refilling does to you is that you are helping yourself to increase in the consciousness of his presence and his ability in you are you together uti wonu mi o utin ba mi soro do you believe that song uti wonu mi o can we sing it together Otimba mi sora. Aha. Owo nu Mose. Sing it from your heart. Mose ba o kun sora. Eh, owo nu Elija. Elija ba ino sora. Owo ba o. 
Oh, I want no Maria. Maria be Olubala. Araye. Oh, yeah. Oh, ti want no me. Oh, timba me soro. Aya fresca fela map tela stwaba la kaves. Be not drunk with wine, wine in his excess, but be filled with the spirit. Now, I want to, I want to teach you something. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? When you see comma in English language, what does it mean, sir? Eh? Uh, uh, pause. Does it mean stop? It means the conversation water. Conversation water. Okay, discussion. Exactly. So when he says, but be being filled with the spirit, what he's saying is that, okay, now let's look at the expression of the feeling of the spirit. So how do you get being filled with the spirit? Are you ready? Are you ready? I'm going to surprise you from this scripture. I'm going to see something there that probably you have not seen. Now let's go. Verse 19. Number one sign or pathway to be being filled with the spirit is what, sir? Tell, no, no, don't say speaking to yourself. Just write speaking, number one. Being filled with the spirit, the pathway. Number one is what? Speaking. Speaking. Meaning that the speakings of the believer gives expression to the reality that he has come into in the kingdom. That's why when Paul came to the brethren, I think was he at Corinth, he says, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And then they said, we have not heard of no Holy Ghost. Actually, they had received the Holy Ghost, but they had not received new tongues. Is that true? Because when he laid hands upon them and he said, receive you the Holy Ghost, they speak with tongues and prophesied. It was not that the Holy Ghost now came. He was already there, but in another dimension. Because you cannot call Jesus Lord except by the Holy Ghost. Are you together? Speaking to yourself. So let's do it now. In, I know you read it, you don't do it. In Psalms. Psalms can mean the Psalms of Scripture that are accurate, all right, with the New Testament finished work of Christ. Psalms can actually also mean the spiritual songs that are new, but that are scripturally correct. Hallelujah. Psalms and hymns, right? Can somebody sing it, a hymn here? Give us one hymn now. Now, okay, no, that it is thy faithfulness, O oh God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Uh huh. Thou has not thy compassion. Oh, yeah. As thou hast been, thou forever will be great. With understanding, great is thy. Uh huh. Morning by morning. Oh, mercy is I see. <laughs> All I have. Has provided it. Great is I. Lift your voice now. Lord. There are many hymns. From thou fount of every blessing. Light to sing thy praise. Streams of mercy. Season. Call for song. Songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet. Song by flaming tongues above. Praise the mountain fixed upon it. Mount of thine redeeming love. There are hymns. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Ay, 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 ay. Just to take your heart, you'll be aflame with truth. Upon his promise, uh huh. 
<laughs> I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm getting. A reality from scripture. In every day. Still present I some on what bound. Lord, not my feet. Oh, and I got. Oh, Lua Jo, oh, Lua Jo. Oh, yeah, I gave me so good. For me, Lossy, if he got. Oh, ah, I got that to God, you mean, Lord. Oh, la masha kaya dasa brene vento spila na makata a levele koto poroto priyas ever living ever praying ever living ever present kada hagavana Ever living most songs that are scriptural are psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, and then he says, Make into yourselves, you really talk to others until you have effectively talked to yourself. You speak to yourself more than you speak to others. Is that true? Oh, is that true? Every day, as you are going on your lecture. You are saying, Oh, things are hard, things are tough, and then you remember the same God who was there with you in the midnight hour. Is the same God is able to wipe your tears away. Sometimes you are alone because somebody jilted you, or offended you, or harassed you, and you are looking for a scripture. Then you found something in the Psalms. And then as you held on to that song, a song came from the scripture. Solomon in all his arrays is not clothed as one of these ones. He says, these ones don't spin, they don't talk, but the Father fits them. How much more you that can talk in other tongues? That can call upon the Father. He says, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and receive grace to help in time of need, tell your neighbor, I cannot be stranded. I am not helpless. He says, speaking to yourself, Larry, is not over. You went to the exam hall and they showed you a missing script. And you looked at it, your matric number. You even used barrel to draw the line. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, what is happening? And then you say, but I fasted. I prayed. I prophesied. God showed me. God spoke to me. God did not lie concerning you. The situation that does not comply to what God is showing you is the lie. Meaning if God has told you something, what is written is superior to what is happening. Will go unfulfilled. For the word of God is quick and powerful. It will not return to him void until it has accomplished that which it was sent to do. Oh, the anointing of God is strong. We will pray shortly. Hymns and spiritual songs. Let's look for a spiritual song now. A spiritual song is simply a song that is biblical, but you, you sing it with sincerity and truth. Remember in John 4, the Bible says, this woman, and then he said, you see, the hour comet and now is where the true worshippers shall in water. And in truth, meaning sometimes you have forgotten all that you read. You read, oh, and you are forgotten. You don't say, hey, oh, pardon. That's a wrong conversation with yourself. What do you do? You remind yourself that God does not fail. You do not die. You do not lie. What exists? Oh, I like speaking. Tell your neighbor speaking. So you are not saying God. Say no. Because it has already happened. Declaring with God what has been said, the judgment that is written, therefore your circumstances will comply. Be 
building up yourself like that in your most holy faith. Blessings and glory. Wisdom, thanksgiving. Yeah, no, no. Whoa, power and man. Bazabarat prea vala no moko shaket. The Lord forever. Amen, amen, amen. That song is powerful. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Oh, blessings and Oti Bagbo Bogo wisdom, thanksgiving and the honor, power and my power and my oh, beyond to your way. Yeah. Can you pray in other tongues? Just one minute. I sense a move of the spirit. Caliber hearts. Ay 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 ay. Lebre de que vele gobre a se branta lava haskes. A sabarata cabarian de levenos. E kava vo ve radi urata lia para na kabahates. All right, all right, all right. He say he's speaking to yourselves. Sounds him spiritual songs. Uh, give me my Ephesians five nineteen now. Then the next thing he says is sing. Speaking. Number two is what, sir? Is flowing streams of water. It's flowing uh, rivers, 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 gushers of living water. It flows from your belly. It flows from you. Gushers. Gushers. Meaning that if you do not have enough supply, you cannot supply others. Ah, tell him matter. So, when you spend time speaking to yourself and then singing and making melody to God, what is happening is that you are tuning to the frequency of the Holy Spirit. How can you walk when you don't know the... Oh, how can you run? How can you run? <laughs> When you don't know the way, how do you want to do spiritual warfare? How can you fly? <laughs> Somebody wants to fly this night. The power at work in you, bringing everything. Oh, you know. Let's let's tie it up somewhere. We'll just pray. I will start the teaching for Ephesians six tomorrow. Now look at this. Number one is what speaking. Number two is what's up. Singing. Number three. Number three. Let's try. Number three. Do you know, for example, if I sing now, if I really sing, if I sing, Jesus, remember the illustration I gave you? He will homology. You are speaking the same thing in consent. What God has said about you is the only thing that stands. You keep saying it. Your circumstances may not look like it, but forget about it. It must align. Why? Because forever, oh Lord, your word is settled. We are, sir, in heaven. It began from heaven and it must be concluded in heaven. That's why when you die, you don't remain on earth. You must first go back to your source, where you came from. The Bible says, he that is from above is above all things. Meaning that even though it looks like you are below, you are not below. You have been made to sit together with him in heavenly places. Far above principalities, powers, might, thrones, dominion. Every name that is named in this world and in that which is to come. You know what that means? See that in heavenly places, just like heaven. It's a lie. Sometimes uh, there's no money in your pocket. Too, no. And then Zenith can send you a letter and say, you are owing us. <laughs> MTN can say, eh, um, your main balance now is minus 276 number. Nera. But tell your neighbor, that's not my reality. What God has said there is, you omnipresence. At least you can enter. <laughs> now, this is it. Jesus is the same today. 
yesterday and he is also omni omnipotent omniscient and omnipresent listen because he is the same every day God never runs short of power the day God's power increases or reduces God will cease to be God it's called the doctrine of the immutability of God he's not subject to mutation the the way you came here is not the way you are living. You know why? Number one, your weight might have been adjusted. Number two, one air might have grown in your beard. Was there? Number three, something might have happened to you. But do you know that as you have been here now, you have grown? Guess what? God does not grow. Therefore, it's not really Arubu or Joy. It's any bani. Because Arubu means he has grown old. Is the white air? Listen, the white air does not mean. Listen, when the Bible says God has air white as wool, it does not mean God has air and has air on it if you say that god has head meaning god must have kidney and intestine because he cannot be a headful spirit without intestines are you here <laughs> are you together hey, so as you worship god you don't need to know whether it is the omnipotence of god or the omnipotence of god or the omniscience of god that wants to work yours is you are speaking to yourself. what you need is the omnipotence as you are speaking to yourself punt, you are aligning to the importance of God. Once you align, like the power of God is revealed in the you need. Then you go to omni, 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 and then you begin to say, Christ in me is the wisdom and the power of God. You speak to yourself, then you speak to your neighbor, you speak to your friends, you continue to confess what God has said about them. After a while, your brother that is a drug addict, one day he will change. Your brother will not change because you told him stop it. Your brother will change because you are showing him an identity that is superior to what he's experiencing. So what religion does is, religion tries to change your action, but your nature has not changed. Have you seen a pig before? Do you know that a pig is not really dirty? A pig just likes death because it's cool. It's cool. Are you following me now? If you wear a Real Madrid jersey, the white one, for a pig, and you tell the pig, you must not, you must not does not change a man. You are changes a man. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Me, it's not possible. I'm not yet righteous. No, he has made you to be righteous. And then, on the basis of the reality of your identity, because your identity is superior to every other thing, your identity, and you confess it with God, suddenly you will know, have the wisdom of God working in you. It's you that we're looking for the wisdom of God in Francis. Let somebody lay out to me so that I can have wisdom. There is but you in your own life too. You can engage the wisdom of God. Why? Christ has become to you now. Not just the power of God, but what's that? The wisdom of God. And it does not the omnipresence. The omnipresence is what tells you although you are afraid of death, death suddenly becomes to you a transition from to another phase of glory. Because if we saw those without hope, if our in this world, we are of all men, most miserable. Meaning that Jesus died and rose again. Because if he died and rose, us too, in him, we died. In him. Because he rose, we will rise. We will not only rise, we will ascend. We will not only ascend, we will sit together with him in the last day. So even the fear of death is already defeated before you die. Meaning the believer is stronger than death. Are you still following? Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Speaking, number two. Singing, number three. Let's do the third one. Making melody in your heart. Next one. So that we can pray. Next one, 20. Huh? Giving, so there is speaking, there is singing, there is water. Giving, giving of thanks. Give thanks with a grateful heart. I'm showing you how to be really spiritual. Because listen, you can do like this. Hey, Coco, oh, oh, it's nice. But if your motive is wrong, even that action is a waste of time. I've met a brother before who was speaking in Ausa. Because people have told him that if you do not speak in tongues in this program, you are in trouble. So he was speaking in Ausa. They said, you see, he's speaking in tongues in Ausa. Then later I called him. I said, bro, do you hear Ausa? He said, actually, uh, we live among uh, Ausa people that I just wanted them to leave me alone. Listen, if it is there, it is there. If it is not there, it's not there. 
But listen, in case you are here and you cannot speak with new tongues, it does not mean you will go to hell. There are many other avenues for the believer to express God and experience God until that comes. And if you don't receive till you die, you still did not feel. Tell your neighbor you did not feel. So, there is so much pressure. I said, well, me, I will just say my own to anything. Not anything, no. Everything else that happens outside his presence is just... Have you, have you heard some people speak in tongues? I'm not saying tongues... Uh, you watch an Indian film, then you spoke Indian type of tongue. You say, eh, you are deep. It's not the kimnanishness of a man's tongue that makes his tongues powerful. It's his union with the Father. Meaning, some pastors can be saying, ba 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 ba. It doesn't mean they are lazy Christians. So. Hello, sir. Our Father and the Lord in this ministry, even some of you already know, is, uh, you already know how it sounds. Does that mean he's not a man of God? Does that mean he's not growing in the spirit? Young people, let us calm down. I know your own is. Crevu Alvi Aldo Sumia Maori. But be sure that it is producing power. If it is not producing power, it's not connected to the omnipotent. Therefore, it is not potent in heaven, on earth, even among demons. But there are some people in their sincerity of heart, what they have received as they steward it to God, it becomes stronger and it becomes stronger and it becomes stronger and it becomes stronger. He says, But you belong building up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in. That praying in the Holy Ghost is not praying in tongues. He didn't mention tongues. He says actually praying in partnership with the Holy Spirit. Meaning sometimes thanksgiving is the prayer you need. Sometimes you are just saying, Father, I thank you. That I thank you can heal somebody. You don't need to say, oh yeah. No, no, you don't need that. Are you, are you catching something? Meaning sometimes prayer of thanksgiving. Great are you, Lord. Greatly to be praised. As simple as it is. You say, no, I want something. Oh. Hey, <laughs> we like drum. Are you still with me now? Are you getting blessed now? Giving thanks. So number one is what? Speaking. Number two, singing. Number three, giving of thanks. Number four, hallelujah. Can we celebrate the reverend? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. We love you, sir. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate Jesus in his life one more time. Aha. <laughs> in a sanctuary, praise him. In the firmament of the spirit. So, number one is what speaking. Number two, let's just stand so that we will pray. And then the reverend would continue. I have about 15 minutes more. So, let's just stand. Number one is what, sir? Speaking. Number two. Number three. Giving. Uh -huh. Number four. No, continue. Verse 21. There's one more. Number four is what, sir? Is this one that is hard? Because in the organogram that you were giving, they didn't tell you that submitting one to another is also a spiritual thing. So you will rather go submit to your Muslim friend and tell the person, actually, uh, do you know that I, I stole? Then that one say, ah, you mean even that your Holy Ghost that make you fall down cannot make you stand? And then you are joining the enemy to push back that which God intends to build. Submitting one to another means that there is that communication of the spirit and sweet fellowship that we can actually discuss things with ourselves that we may not necessarily make public and we will solve it among ourselves. And what it does to you is that number one, it brings healing. It says confess your first one to another that you may be healed. Some people will not be healed of certain things because secrecy has become the order of the day in their lives. And I can't blame some of them because they cannot trust anybody. The last person they trusted failed them. But it says that no, you and I can actually come to that point where we not only confess our first one to another, we submit one to another as unto the Lord. So I can listen to you, you can listen to me. I can be corrected by you. Listen, there is nobody that is beyond correction in the body of Christ. The day we get to that point where we cannot be corrected, we are already in a danger zone. Jesus did not offer that path for us. Do you know that Paul actually corrected Peter in the book of Galatians? Is that true? Did Peter said, do you know I'm the apostle and you, they just brought you, Barnabas just brought you in? No. He listened to him and in the later epistles of Peter, he said the wisdom that was given to our brother Paul. Why? Submitting one to another. Speaking. Singing. Huh? Giving of thanks. And then, when you allow these things to be in place, 
what happens is that you are building the reservoir of the ministry of the spirit to be very strong in your life it is impossible to truly submit one to another to have your own company that you fellowship with that you open up to that strengthens you and that you're also strengthening it is impossible for you to be lost like that equipping the saints is not a one-man mobile thing christianity is not a low ranger religion the way may be rough the path may be narrow but your god is strong and he works in community tell your neighbor god works in community so if we want to experience revival we want to experience the presence and the power of god when you follow these four things genuinely and then you now press into the other things concerning spiritual warfare that is shared in ephesians 6 then we can now talk about finally somebody say finally so what brought us here is the word what finally are you blessed all right let's celebrate them we want to pray before the reverend comes we want to pray two prayer points and the first thing we want to ask the lord tonight is that the lord would open our heart to understand his present speakings for his church there are things that god is saying now and they are not contrary to the lord open the eyes of my understanding to hear what you are saying to me as a member of your church in these last days that's our first prayer point you can engage god now open my eyes open my ears to hear open my heart to understand open my heart to understand that i will not mind high things and get distracted by the lying vanities that fly around help my heart jesus to live a house Sit the Lord's face tonight and ask him that by his mercy he will supply to your spirit his ordinances for this present hour. That there are two things that must happen in the end of a battle. You either become a victor or a victim. You stand on holy ground tonight and you hold to the horns of the altar and you cry to God. Say, mercy Lord, to see, to hear, to understand and to apply. We will not labor in vain. We will not labor in vain. Help my heart to design your speakings in this present time for your church and for my life. God has a will and only those who open their hearts in meekness will hear his voice. Zedeli Barota Peranto Priatolis, whom the God of this world has blinded their hearts. Terikato Priatakatoska, and their foolish heart has been darkened. Perete Precota, that although they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God. And then their foolish heart was darkened, and they were given over to a reprobate man to do the things that are not pleasing. It will not be that in my own day we will say, that God has left his church. God will not leave his people. Libro. We can only beg him for mercy. For the Holy Ghost takes orders from no man. Yetobeleta Telias. Revani Omekoa. It was Some of you, the Lord would begin to speak to you. Even now as you pray, the areas where disobedience has been the order of the day, the areas where arrogance, haste and presumption has been the order of the day, the sins of the spirit and the sins of the flesh. The fire extinguishers in our lives uh, that makes uh, revival fire look uh, like fireworks. The things that we continue to harbor that make us not look like those of the second. You will be among those who have been numbered to lift his banner high. Yahweh Nishi, the Lord our banner. Not a denomination, but the Lord our banner. Because you stand tall upon that which Jesus has already done. 
He has secured the victory. But we have work to do. Lord, open my eyes to see. let light shine let light shine shine jesus 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 we seek your face tonight let us secure the mercy of god that our hearts we are alive to the present revelation position of god for our lives and in our day boyota eye no palayanana abrata lebe yoka ebiasa i tell you evo velie kebeyano rabadabale ishabala rabala nata i totea eduabe o ye miaka akali eka o sete kabo Oh Jesus, that we will stand. Zelo veketa shema. He says, finally, finally. Shabalata baka ayamana me zebelebele no ki araba ambrata te ostepela prakete press press a little more, a little more. I am it. You must become. You must become. Enough of running without a penete reto. Oh, mashata belita valia nakiake. Sevele de nuka kaderia zadava. Ashebe ele boliada. Aile zani mayana mana mana yada. Rabadilis tabayuna. Zibaluyo. Hey, skepota, speaking to yourselves. Some hymns and spiritual songs uh, singing and making melody in your heart unto God. Plete tale tali dava radavali manakato mento presto vela paria zakana vate lope toko toko taba taba yabata mehe meheta potope that the work of the cross will be deep in our heart, will be deep in our heart. Would you be like this?